Nestled along the enchanting Mediterranean Sea, countries such as Spain, Italy, and Greece have gained global recognition for their exceptionally healthy diets. And they're home to some of the oldest living communities on the planet. <laughs> Coming up, I'll explore just what makes the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle so healthy. And what are the benefits of cabbage? Vitamin C, antioxidants. We'll chat with medical experts about diet, learn about lifestyle in Sardinia, and take a deep dive into the captivating world of olive oil. Wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank Licari. Join me as we explore living longer and living well by uncovering the secrets of the Mediterranean. This program is made possible by the generous philanthropy of Nicholas V. Perricone, MD. The Greek islands are home to one of the world's five oldest living communities, known as Blue Zones. These are regions where people not only live longer, but also have lower rates of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and depression. To find out why, I traveled to the capital city of Athens, which boasts some of the longest continuous studies on diet and longevity in the world, here at the University of Athens' Igeniteo Hospital, I tracked down one of the leading experts in this field. Dr. Nick? Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks so much for making the time. Really appreciate Dr. it. Dr. Nikolaos Skarmaeus is a neurological clinician who studies the links between nutrition, cognition, and long-term brain health. He's especially interested in the links between diet and dementias like Alzheimer's disease. We know from epidemiological studies that people who uh, tend to follow these principles, they tend to do better in their health outcomes. There are a lot of studies suggesting that if you eat in a more Mediterranean way, there's a decrease in many biomarkers of inflammation in your body. You have kind of honed in on a cognitive health. How did you, how did you come to that? What is it about those, the Mediterranean diet that helps specifically for cognitive health? Yeah, exactly. So there wasn't so much research linking diet with neurological diseases. And I was um, interested in uh, cognition and dementia. And of course, I had the Mediterranean right. background. Sure. This is what my mom, uh, you know, uh, cooks. And um, so I was interested to look at this relation. One of Nick's first research studies while at Columbia University suggested that those who followed the Mediterranean diet more strictly were 40% less likely to develop Alzheimer's than those who didn't. So I had to ask, what is the secret behind this diet? The truth is that uh, we do not understand very well the exact mechanism. We have more like a bird's eye view. There's also this, uh, you know, cultural and traditional and social part. And uh, since we're talking about the Mediterranean diet, it's, it's quite tasty. Yes. It's also a pleasure. It's not, you know, it's not uh, an effort Correct. to try and eat this diet. With all this talk of the Mediterranean diet, I had to take a quick break to see what I could find to eat. Even after perusing the restaurants of Athens, I wanted more info on exactly what the Mediterranean diet is. So I went to Harakopio University to see nutrition expert, Dr. Mary Yanakulia. The first thing is that it's a plant-based diet. So in Greece, your fruits, vegetables, and legumes, whole grain cereals, convert from refined to whole grains, yeah. and then reduce meat intake and fast food. And the final thing is to use healthy fats. I mean, olive oil is the best choice. What about if you and I, because I need a guide, I'm, okay. you know, yeah. What about if you and I, maybe you take me out shopping and we can look and see if uh, you can help me out a little bit and what I would choose? Could we do that? Okay, I'll try. Yeah, yeah appreciate yeah. it. Okay. Let's go. First thing I'm noticing, uh, besides the chaos, because it's like incredible, there's a lot of um, interaction, banter. Yeah, yes, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of conversation that goes on. Whereas in a grocery store, you sort of just pick with your basket and go. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as you you are a client of a certain market, you know people. We, we talk to them to about their kids, about their produce, everything. Right. And it's, 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 so it's yeah, it's an event. I like it. It's like a, it's a fun outing. It's and all the people like this market of because course. it may be their only one communication event during the day. The other thing, as I'm looking at the vegetables, there are random shapes. Yeah. There are random colors. Yeah. yeah, it's quite strange for me to have all oranges in the same shape. And the smell. Have you noticed that? Yes, every little table has a different smell. Where you walk into a grocery store into the produce section, no you don't smell? smell anything. You mentioned earlier when we were talking the variety mm. that you need to incorporate. Yeah, it's seasonal. You grew up from your family knowing what seasonal vegetables. Yeah. I don't know that. Now, I, I grew up probably closer to how you grew yeah, up with yeah, my mom yeah. and dad, but most Americans, Do we not... don't know what seasonal vegetables are. But I, I know that, I mean, from my family, it's you, Yeah, you didn't, it's go to, right, you didn't go to school for it. No, no. Spending time with Mary and Nick taught me a lot about how our daily diet is connected to overall health. But both of these experts also hinted that there's more to it than simply eating a specific set of foods. To continue my search, I ventured into another blue zone of longevity on the island of Sardinia. Sardinia is the Mediterranean's second largest island, and it boasts nearly 10 times more centenarians per capita than the US. To find out why, I visited Casa Mediterranea, home of the Longevity Academy, founded by Sardinian biologist, Dr. Ivo Pirizzi. Ivo? Frank. Oh, what a pleasure. Welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Please, come in. Wow, look at this. This is like your own little oasis back here. Yeah, thank you. Here in this cultural workshop and hotel, Ivo and his family share their knowledge of Sardinian food and culture with guests from all over the world. Ivo is especially focused on how the history of the island has impacted diet, and longevity. It has been clearly proved that uh, the phenomenon of longevity in the Centurions didn't exist before, let's say, the first half of the 1800s. It's something that comes from an ancient society combined with improvement that are brought by modernity. Now you just, this is the cradle yeah. like we talked about, right? Yeah. It would be covered with more uh, grass. Yeah. Ivo put me to work preparing smreka, a 7,000-year-old recipe for curing local gray mullet in seagrass from the nearby lagoon. And he showed me how to make semolina-based fregola, a Sardinian pasta with a more modern Middle Eastern influence. It turns out the Mediterranean diet isn't fixed at all. It's an ongoing evolution of historical, ecological, and social forces. Different elements and aspects combined together have made uh, the phenomenon of longevity possible and the social relationships is one of the most important. There are a lot of studies which prove clearly that loneliness is killing a lot of people. So that being interconnected is one of the most important uh, aspects. To explore this social aspect, Ivo took me to meet a few of his friends in town. In between the food and the people in the Sardinian culture, there is a bridge which is called wine. Hey ya! Ciao! Ciao, ciao! This 200 year old cellar, known as the Antica Cantina Cadeo, is where brothers Tiberio and Marco continue the family tradition of producing Vernaccia di Oristano, a sherry like wine made from a local variety of grapes, likely brought to Sardinia by the Phoenicians in ancient times. This local wine isn't for sale, mind you, it's only for sharing with friends. So if we become friends, Right? There is a possibility. I can come here and sit down with you guys. Tiberio has many friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said Tiberio has a lot of friends, yeah. <laughs> and everyone drinks. <laughs> and this is a fabric. 
right, of the of the communal experience here. Bene, no, oh, bene. more friends. This really is what happens. It is what happens oh, regularly. Friends, when when his friends oh, yeah. see uh, the door open, the open, the ah. open door, they will they will sneak in in order to see if something ah, is fantastic. Yeah. Che poi le cose improvvisate sono le cose più belle. Ah, that's beautiful. He said the things that could happen, uh, sort of improvised and uh, sub uh, spontaneously, are always the best things. Once the official greetings were over, Marco invited me to help grill the mugine, locally caught gray mullet in the cabra style, seasoned only with salt. So we're taking the fish one by one and we're putting them on the grill. When we sat down together, I was treated to homemade sausage, local anchovies, and a Sardinian delicacy, botarga the salted and cured roe of the gray mullet. I forgot to share a very important piece of information. This botarga has been homemade by this guy. He made it himself, here. Yeah. Evo also prepared a barley-based dish with fresh tomatoes and basil from his garden. According to longevity studies, consumption of barley used to be a key staple in Blue Zone diets. Is this considered an ancient grain? It is, it is yeah. considered an ancient grain, and from a nutritional point of view, it is the cereal with the lowest glycemic index. Right, but this would be a, obviously advantageous if, if you have diabetes or things like that where you absolutely, want to lower, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And okay. it is important to bring it up again because unfortunately, we have just left it behind. Last but not least, Marco served the grilled fish and I asked Ivo about the essentials of the Mediterranean diet. The two concepts that uh, are worth mentioning are locally produced and seasonal, and possibly your own production. And, and bringing and friends community. Together. Yeah, people that you like, all right? The next morning, Ivo and I set out to explore a blue zone in the Barbaja. Throughout history, Sardinians retreated time and time again to safety in this rugged, mountainous heartland. Here, they perfected ways of living in community and eating from the land that experts think improved their longevity. This is actually the only place on the planet where the number of male centenarians exceeds female centenarians. Hey, hey! Hey, y'all! Hey! In these hills, shepherds like artisanal dairy farmer Massimo Secchi still tend to sheep and goats, producing milk and cheeses that are especially healthy. The place here is tough, is harsh, yeah. and the plants, in order to survive, need to produce certain substances like antioxidants. Those substances that are health-promoting will be eventually found in the milk and later in the cheese. Incredible. And his relationship that he's created with these goats as well is pretty special, right? I mean, if, he knows I mean, their names. Yeah, everyone is named. It's incredible. <laughs> so not only do you know where it's coming from, you know yeah. the name of the goat you that know, produced you, the milk. You do know. Fantastic. Yeah. Look at this. Amazing. Evo took me into the hills above Seulo, where shepherds traditionally tended to their herds. We met up with Massimo here as he produced fresh cheese from his goat's milk. Research has shown that goat's milk is especially helpful in preventing neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. This is incredible. You can, you can, I can try. just try it right now. You will be impressed. Get out of here. Isn't it incredibly sweet? I mean, it, it's simple, but still it is delicious, isn't it? It's amazing. And it is delicious because it comes from a place which is unique in itself, because only certain plants and herbs grows there. And those goats are eating those herbs, it's getting into the milk, yeah. and that natural flavor yeah. that I'm tasting and, and is coming right from And eventually those that. incredible flavors will be transferred to the milk and eventually to the cheese. Now, yeah, is there nothing else added to this at this point? This is No, it. no, no, this is it. That's incredible. <laughs> After leaving the Barbaja, Ivo took me south to a very special place in his journey of studying longevity, the village where he grew up. We went to meet his family at his childhood home for a lesson in traditional Sardinian bread making. So she said that her, her, her mom would teach her these and these have been passed down from generation to generation. So all these designs and the method that they're working with has been a generational thing. So. 
and I'm about to ruin it, apparently. <laughs> Traditional pane kokoi is made from just four ingredients, water, flour, yeast, and a pinch of salt. But this bread isn't like the loaves we have at home. The dough is made with semolina, a healthier flour made from durum wheat, and it's risen with mother's yeast rather than brewer's yeast. There is a huge difference. One could be considered junk food and the other a jewel. The bread made with the mother dough is a very complex and incredible thing. Okay. And there are some families that, that are still working with the mothers that can be 30, 40, or 50 years old. It's incredible. So yeah. for generations, they yeah. have kept this mother yeast yes. As, as yes. alive. Yeah. We've, she said we've run out of room. That's how much bread they've made. So that's, uh, that's a lot. There is something that, it, that has been kept alive, which is called in Sardinian language Samandada. Every time that one oven is lit on, a uh, few loaves will be delivered to the ones which are in need. This is something that helps to bring the community together. During the bread's second rising, Ivo's dad put me to work getting the oven ready. The whole pane kokoi process takes about four hours, so we took a break and enjoyed a homemade lunch. Everything we ate was produced by the family. The chickpeas, the tomatoes, the olive oil. So I asked what they each thought was the secret ingredient to a long life. They said things like tranquility, open air, and keeping the stress of life in check. And she also mentions, very important, both of them, how important it is to keep family close and friends close and to nurture those relationships. Because as we get older, we are, tend to be isolated. But here, what they're trying to do is keep all the friends, as you see, gathered around the table, so nurturing those, uh, those relationships. Very, very good. And at this point, I think that uh, you should try a little bit of my father's red wine. This is being fat in casa. After lunch, it was finally time to bake the bread. And when it came out hot from the oven, Ivo's mom let me do what I like to think was the most important part. Hello? Oh. That's it. Yeah. Ecco, finito. Shall we try our creation? Something which is uh, sacred here yeah. is to cut the bread without the knife at the beginning. Okay, yeah. Please, first for the lady. It was testing me. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Exploring Sardinia with Evo, I learned a lot about the importance of eating locally and knowing where your food comes from. But I was most surprised by how history, ecology, and community are truly inseparable from longevity and health. So I went to see an old friend who's bringing all of these elements together in the production of a key ingredient in the Mediterranean diet. Just a few kilometers outside of Florence, I joined my friend and extra virgin olive oil expert, Phil Bucchino, in the hills of Tuscany. Filippo, bello. Oh, Franco. Ci riuniamo in paradiso. So good to see you. Thanks for coming. Ciao, Andrea. Franco. Piacere, piacere. This olive grove is one of many across the region that Phil and Andrea have rescued and rejuvenated. Together, they've restored more than 5,000 abandoned olive trees to their full olive oil producing health. So the process of revitalizing a grove takes how long? It depends on the condition of the grove. We've had groves two years, but on average it's three to five years. Phil's journey into this world began with a single taste of olive oil that transformed his life. But he believes this work is about more than just a product. I never wanted to get into the business of olive oil. To me, it's not about selling olive oil. To me, it was almost about using olive oil as the vehicle for positive change, because I realized that it's very difficult to scale a product when one tree gives you two bottles. But the impact, the ripple effect, the positive ripple effect on the growth, the land, the community, and the planet, it's, it's too big to ignore. So for me, it's about no growth abandon. Every fall, Phil and Andrea and their team harvest these rejuvenated groves 
and the olives are taken to a local mill to be expertly processed into an extra virgin olive oil, a healthy pillar of the Mediterranean diet. It's basically undeniable right now the health benefits of olive oil. When you think about extra virgin olive oil in its basic form, it's freshly extracted raw olive juice. So it's as pure and as natural as it can be. You got a very high level of monounsaturated fatty acids, basically meaning that they'll lower your LDL. And on top of that, now when we get into the more premium olive oil, now we're thinking about antioxidants and anti-inflammatory substances. And if you're using it like we do in the Mediterranean, it's a daily occurrence. It's not just once a day, it's three, four, five times a day in everything. That creates an anti-inflammatory system in your body, which helps to heal you from disease. It's a, it's a line of defense against free radicals. It's a complete and total line of defense. So we've obviously established all the health benefits of olive oil, but now I want to know, how do I taste a great olive oil? How do I know the difference? Can you make me an expert like you? Oh, I can't wait, I let's, can't wait. Let's do that. In addition to producing olive oil, Phil is also an assaggiatore di olio di oliva, or certified olive oil taster. So if anyone can help us understand how to pick an olive oil, it's him. So this oil is from last harvest. But this came from this grove. This came from this grove, wow. and this started at a really high quality, so it still, hopefully will still hold what it's supposed to hold. Okay, okay the first thing, eyes yes. mean nothing. That's why we look at a blue glass. So it doesn't matter how fluorescent green it is, it doesn't mean that because it's green, it's good. So we're gonna close it with one hand. Okay. We wanna warm it up. Oh. Okay. Gonna warm it up, and then we smell it. Oh, wow. Ooh. So here we've got aromatic herbs, definitely sage, yep. grass, artichoke, now we're gonna taste it. When we taste it, the first thing we wanna look for is the bitterness, and it's gonna be at the back of your tongue. Now, like anything else, it's what kind of bitterness? Is it like espresso, dark chocolate, or bitter, and it's a pleasant bitterness. And then we're gonna do what is called stripaggio, retronasal olfaction. We're gonna introduce air forcefully through our mouth. You're gonna put your teeth above your tongue. Wow, that is unattractive. Right, that is really it's not unattractive. attractive. It's not like in wine. <laughs> wine is very sexy. This is not very sexy. <laughs> And the reason why we did it is pretty simple. If you think about it, first of all, you want to release the aromatic compounds and touch all the receptors of your mouth. But also, it's because olive oil sits above your saliva. So you want to separate it. Okay. So you're going to separate it to make sure that it hits all your receptors of your mouth. Why does my mouth not feel like I, it's gone? I don't feel oily right now. And that's, again, one of the hacks. Quality olive oil will leave your mouth clean. And it's caused by oleocantho. Remember when we talked about anti-inflammatories? Yes, yes, yes. And antioxidants, that's an anti-inflammatory. So it's actually known as nature's ibuprofen because of its wow. anti-inflammatory quality. This doesn't feel fatty or greasy. No. It feels like I just had some water. It's beautiful. It's clean. I feel like an expert. You're ready. This is a sala degustazione, a tasting panel where producers send their olive oils to get graded. These professional tasters will judge up to 700 olive oils each year. It turns out, olive oil is the only food in the world that's actually classified in part by the human palate. When you create an olive oil, there's a lot about the artistry behind it and the pleasure when you taste at home that we talked about. Here, us human beings, we become instruments. We're very objective, we're gonna taste the oil we're gonna remove all of our own biases and judge an olive oil for what it is. What are they, what are they using? What, what's the sort of everything that's involved here? Yeah, so we've got obviously our tasting glasses. We've got a heater to actually calibrate all the olive oils so they have the exact same temperature and every oil is judged the same way. We've got apples to cleanse our palate and then obviously we have a sheet that we fill out and then our panel leader will then collect them. If you notice in this room, it's very quiet because it's you, your senses, and the olive oil. Here, what I say all the time, here's where you let the olive oil speak to you. Right. You want to actually try to listen to the olive oil because that's the work of the producer for a full year. So it's a personal relationship between you and the It's a personal relationship. I had a chance to chat with the panel members and ask them for suggestions on how to pick a great extra virgin olive oil. My suggestion is keep tasting. Keep buying small quantities of olive oil and acquire your own personal taste and then you decide this is the best for me I can't tell you which is the best one once you start tasting good olive oil you are completely done after learning how to taste a quality extra virgin olive oil I had just one more important question for Phil how best to use it in the kitchen he suggested I ask chef Andrea Perrini a culinary pioneer in the world of olive oil pairing Tony of vari panificati 
ci facciamo le maionesi, ci mantechiamo le salse. Praticamente nella mia cucina ci faccio tutto. Di tutto, di tutto. Uh, basically he's using it as a dressing, as a flavoring, in mayonnaise, in butter, as a, as a marinade. There's so many different ways he's using it. E adesso che si mangia? Here in Italy, they truly use olive oil for everything, including this local specialty, bistecca alla fiorentina, which is marinated in and finished with extra virgin olive oil. Just remember that red meat is only an occasional treat in a healthy diet. Now, one of the things we never actually talked about, although I mentioned it with a few of the judges yesterday, mm -hmm. is the way that olive oil is bottled. What's all the information on here mean? Is there something I should be looking for when I'm back home? That's a great question. I mean, labels can be somewhat misleading, but you can start by simple little hacks. Glass bottle, dark bottle. So when you're looking at a dark bottle, you're gonna keep the light away. Now a bottle that has caps that look like these, that kind of try to minimize level of oxygen getting into the bottle is good. And then obviously you want to look at the label. The more the producer wants to tell you about what they do, it's a sign that they are proud of the work that they've done. Right. Then also the most important thing is it's a freshly squeezed juice. So you want it to be fresh. You want to look for a harvest date. And then your taste buds. And obviously your yeah. taste bud. You yeah. want to learn how to taste. Right. So what I think I've learned today is that there are many different ways to use olive oil and it is the healthiest choice you can make. Mm -hmm. But it's more than choosing to use it. You have to know how it's grown, how it's processed and how it makes it to your table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a great expert in olive oil has the ability to change our lives, the ones of the community and the planet. Love it. Chin chin to olive oil. Yeah. Chin chin. <laughs> When I came to Italy and Greece to find the secrets behind the Mediterranean diet, I found so much more than I expected. It isn't just what we choose to eat, but how we choose to eat it. It matters where our food comes from, who grew it, and how it was harvested or processed. It matters that we take the time to prep and cook meals together with family and friends. And it matters that we slow down and savor the flavors and also the company. It's these connections that help us live longer and live well. This program is made possible by the generous philanthropy of Nicholas V. Paracone, M.D.